I have so many false teeth in my mouth because I did stupid things and got into, you know, silly fights that were totally avoidable. And things, you know, it's just, just dumb things about growing up in a totally, you know, ridiculous environment for young boys and stuff like that. But, you know, you grow up, you, you learn, and I like to think that I've learned. Today is day 529 of quarantine and I'm slowly losing my mind. That's how I feel. I have been, you know, working hard to do my part to stay inside, but it's also taking its toll on my, my mental state. So I really have to work overtime to find things to engage myself and distract myself and um, speak with my therapist every Tuesday via uh, Skype call. And we have worked out that I need uh, to develop my own routine while I'm inside. And so that's currently on my list. I have like established blocks and I'll interchange the blocks every day, but I'll have like a block is like meditate and journal. And I do a 10 to 15 minute meditation, depending on my focus uh, that morning. Um, so it helps me sort of think a little bit about, about my behavior and how I choose to behave. And yeah, as long as I journal, as long as I get some words out, afterwards I'll have some tea and I'll read some news. At the moment I'm trying, to re I'm trying to minimize my coronavirus intake um, just because it makes me very anxious. Um, so I'll sort of, I'll, I'll read maybe five to 10 minutes of coronavirus information, just, just things that are sort of crucial information. And then afterwards I'll sort of read everything that I can that's news that is not coronavirus related, just to remind myself that there are other things happening in the world, that you know, that, that the world still exists and we're still, we're still, moving forward. And then my next block will be um, something for myself, play PlayStation. I bought a PS4, so I will play FIFA or I will watch Thesis and Miro or um, any show that I feel like watching or docu-series. And I'll do that for like a couple of hours and then afterwards I'll ride on my bicycle or go for a walk. It's taken a long time to get that balance. <laughs> I, I, I'm not actually always very balanced. Um, I, I have bipolar, so it's hard for me to find balance, uh, unfortunately, but I work, it just means I have to work harder to find balance. I mean, sometimes I don't feel like following the schedule, and when I feel that coming on, I'll give myself a day or two days. I'll, I'll allow myself to relish in that procrastination, so if I feel like exercising, I will. If I don't, I won't. I don't hold myself you know, accountable for this week, but then, that ends on Sunday and then I'm back on the wagon. So I give myself some time to just splurge if I feel that, if I feel like I'm I'm rejecting routine or anything. And then once I've you know put a lid on that and I've 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 finished that, I go back to regular program. I had a really rough 2018. I had a really, really rough 2018. And um, while you know, I actually while I was experiencing a really rough year personally, professionally things were just exploding for me, and so I was really dealing with this duality of really struggling personally and then really you know publicly doing very well. And I kind of got to this point where I was like, I can't try to hide what I'm dealing with personally, and I also can't treat it like it's something that needs to be hidden. You know, I was just like, it's just easier for me to just say it. It's easier for me to just put it out there. Therefore, I don't need to pretend it doesn't exist. I don't need to, you know, turn it into some boogeyman hiding in the closet. Um, I don't I don't need to be alone dealing with it. You know, if I just put it out there, I can just call it what it is. I don't have to give it any more attention than it deserves. I can just say, cool, that's bipolar. That's what that is. Cool. I'm not the only one that deals with it. A lot of us do. And it's not the end of the world. And this is the interesting thing. People feeling the need to pretend that they don't have mental illnesses because it's a bad thing. I mean, there's nothing bad about having a mental illness. It just means you have to do things a little differently. That's it. It's like somebody with diabetes. It's just a health ailment. That's all it is. As we need to do things or take a prescribed medication just to heal a little differently and to navigate the world a little differently. Nothing wrong with us. That's just the way it is. The great thing about Insecure is the absolute humanity that's shown at all times. You know, nothing, I don't think anything is really, you know, 
shown as like a caricature or, you know, unrealistic of humanity. And so getting to play Andrew, I really, you know, his best friend on the show has bipolar. So it's really cool to explore what's going on, not from my personal experience of, ha of having bipolar, but as somebody close to me would, you know, understanding that, you know, mental illness, it's funny, mental illness it isn't just something that affects the person who has it, it affects the, there's a blast radius, you know, it affects the people around them. And this show has allowed me to really explore what that feels like to be a friend of somebody who's dealing with what, what I deal with on a day to day. And that's been really great. Yes, thank you for reminding me. Actually, it's been a while since I've since I've touched it, but I wrote myself a manifesto. Um, I wrote myself a manifesto that are words of you know affirmation for myself, just like Im Im reminding me of who I am, reminding me of what's important to me, and sort of you know it's kind of like a an, an anchor through the storm um, when I'm having a really rough day or a bad day or getting really oppositionally you know defiant or things like that returning to this mantra, reminding myself of who I am, reminding myself of what is important to me, who I care about, that really can help sort of ground me in difficult times. But some days I just wake up and I'm in a really mood. And when I do that, I also have to just breathe and forgive myself. I have to breathe and remember that I'm human and breathe and remember that that's just where I'm at sometimes. And so I will remind myself of the things that I enjoy, the things that I like. And so if I don't have the energy to go for a run, if I don't have the motivation to go for a, like a, a big workout, I just go for a walk in the sun. Remind myself that I love being in the sun. So as long as I get out there, things start feeling a little bit better.